This is Karen with New Cleveland Radio, and it is time for the Intentionality Gurus with Candace Pollack. And this is going to be our final for this year, uh, not our final podcast, but our final for this year. And um, Candace has a very interesting topic. It is says, broken water heaters and time management. So I understand time management, but hopefully she's going to tell us what this broken water heater means. Yeah, so we're going to be building on the what we talked about the last time in terms of um, Laura Vanderkamp's research and book, 168 Hours. So her premise is that each human has 168 hours a week to spend. And what dictates how that gets spent is often other people's priorities and demands on our time. And we often live our time with large chunks kind of unconsciously. Does that at all resonate? Yep, absolutely. Yep. Okay. So kind of asleep at the wheel. And most of us feel we don't have enough time, particularly when something urgent comes up. And she uses the example of a very, she was studying very high uh, functioning uh, business owners, women business owners and mothers and, and people with a lot of different demands on their time, people responsible for employees and so on. And they, the ones that she was studying, did a time tracker for, I, I think, a year. And they basically showed where they spent their time and a pattern emerged. And the pattern was that those who were the highest functioning, but had that work-life balance, that you know, elusive concept, were the ones that were able to prioritize some of their personal time and their personal activity timeframes more impactfully, as well as work um, more impactfully. So what occurs to you so far? Well, it's interesting that we're talking about this um, because before we went um, live today, I was talking about that I needed some personal time and I'm planning on taking it next week. But then hearing your intro to this today, um, I find that when I get overwhelmed here uh, working, whether it's working my uh, weekend job or sitting here at the desk, I take big chunks of time to uh, do word puzzles and I don't even account for that. I keep saying, oh, I'm so busy. But if I look back, you know, I've taken a half hour here, an hour there. And that tells me that I do have extra time to do things. And we did not rehearse this, did we? No, no. And I'm so glad that, I heard what you were actually saying in the intro because it was like, wait a second, you know, I think if I added up all the hours of word puzzles, even though they tend to calm me down, um, you know, there's so many other things that I think that I want to do, you know, maybe I should use some of that time for those things. Yes, and there may be some things that we do during our work time that are technically under the umbrella of work that might be, you know, outsourced or delegated or automated or just, you know, not done at all. And right. that can free up time. So that's kind of the, the point of her approach in the book, that the time is there. And the example she gives is of one of the women, um, you know, was highly scheduled and a water heater broke and flooded her basement, created this big bad mess, and it took seven hours to organize the crews to come in and clean up the water and clean up the carpets and all the other things. It was seven hours in that week that it took, and the takeaway was those seven hours were made available. Yes, it, it took from time being spent on other things, but what if we were to approach our week, our weeks, our months, our years with that more intentionally and plan for eliminating the things that just are not adding value, not not adding, you know, joy to our lives 
and um, not just abdicate how we spend that non-work time to vegging out. I mean, so it would, yeah, well, you know, I've, I've tried that in the past um, and not for any long period of time, I will admit, you know, I'll, it's usually sometime beginning of the year, I'll look at my calendar and say, whoa, you know, I got to do this differently. And um, I'm going to keep this chunk of time available. And what happens is, is that I start, um, you know, putting in appointments and then I see this big chunk and I go, oh, well, I could do it there. And then I get filled up and then it's like, wait a second, where's the chunk of time that I was going to keep for me? Um, and, and what so, are you talking about remedying that? Well, and I think that I have to be more intentional about it is if I'm going to leave a block of time, maybe I have to actually put in that spot, you know, this is for uh, something other than work, you know, um, and maybe that would be better for me to then identify, okay, hey, you know, I am allowed to um, go take a walk now. Um, I can go read, I can go take a nap, whatever it is that, you know, makes me feel good at that time. And what are some of your personal values in terms of what's important to you in life? Um, it's always been and still is, you know, making sure that everybody else around me is comfortable and is happy or content as they can be. Um, and now that I'm saying that, I'm realizing that this is a good feeling to have, but uh, I don't have that power. So I'm spinning my wheels. And where do you find the time to do those things? Um, I sort of put it in the middle of all my work. It's not that I necessarily take out a chunk of time and say, okay, this is something I'm going to do for somebody else. Um, I just make it fit in wherever I can. Yeah, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But what occurs, particularly you know, after COVID and probably before, many people who work from home or work remotely, the idea is we don't have any boundaries on what is personal time and, and business time. Exactly. And so without some kind of line of demarcation, we're never saying, you know, I'm going home for the day. You know, it's done, like in the so-called old days. And the thought is that if we can be intentional, Cal Newport, who wrote Deep Work and a bunch of other books that are really great, um, basically has a process where he identifies, pre, pre-identifies when he's going to shut down for the day at work. And he works from home primarily. I mean, he's a professor, but he also does a lot of work at home. And he will, you know, declare maybe at five o'clock, it might be six o'clock. It, I, you know, it doesn't matter what time it is specifically. He's the one who is crafting his calendar and his time slots for the best value to him and the things that he values. And so if those things are important to us, we can start with our values and identify, you know, my personal relationships with my family are important to make time and support them and make them, you know, feel um, comfortable and you know their needs are met um, and then I would question what are your values regarding yourself because you know how well can you do that if you're not doing you know um, putting your own oxygen mask on first is the phrase and, well, and um, you know, so what occurs to you when I say these things so what occurs to me is that um, when I knew that um, my son Alex was moving out of town and um his he's on a different time zone um i decided that i needed to change a little bit in my schedule uh not that i expect him to call me every day at the end of work but that's just become somewhat of a tradition of his um and i enjoy i enjoy those conversations and so 
um, I, you know, have decided that five o'clock will be my last podcast of the day because he typically, he, you know, when it's um, six o'clock here, it's five o'clock where he is. And so as I'm finishing a podcast, you know, I'm then available if he were to call. Um, and on the days he doesn't call, I don't sit here waiting for that phone call, but I'm moving away from my desk. I'm doing other things that, um, you know, he won't, he won't be interrupting if he were to call. Um, just and, something. Yeah. And it, and it's really working for me. I mean, I will tell you that, uh, there were a couple of days that he didn't call and I didn't even realize it, but I was, um, I think one day I was actually sitting and just watching TV with my husband. Um, another day, um, I just got real creative in the kitchen. Um, and I was reorganizing my kitchen. Um, and those are, th and that's something that I've been wanting to do. And so I just like had that time and did it and, uh, it worked. Mm -hmm. And how did that, those days feel or that week feel overall? Um, it feels good because again, like you stated, by putting those boundaries up and saying, you know, I'm not going to do anything after this time. Um, I have control over that. It's not like I'm working for somebody that says, Hey, Karen, you know, uh, we need you to stay over today, or we need you now to start working until seven o'clock at night or whatever. Um, and so it felt good to be able to put that down on my calendar that uh, five o'clock is my last podcast of the day. Um, and if but I. What, what would normally end at, you know, no further than 6 p.m. Um, yeah, I don't want to last past six. And I will tell you prior to that, I mean, I was doing podcasts at seven, eight, nine o'clock yeah. at night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um and that was to accommodate other people. And, you know, and I was getting myself angry over it. Yeah. It, you know, it's really easy to concede, concede, concede. And then there's no time left for you. Right. So if we start with 168 hours and we subtract out the number of hours in a week that you sleep, roughly, and then subtract out the time it takes for, you know, shopping, food shopping, presumably food prep and, you know, eating meals and then, you know, subtracting out from there, just keep subtracting out the things, the key elements that are not necessarily avoidable. Right. And then we get down to a, I'll call it a remainder figure, some amount of hours left in the week. And some of that will be allocated to work and some of it would be allocated to non-work. And that the non-work could be a variety of categories, subcategories. But what I observed is when I have free time, I, you know, looking back, I would just, you know, uh, advocate to, to work filling that time. There was no, a, a blurred line there. And then I started practicing Cal Newport shutdown complete. And that time of day can change because sometimes I teach classes in the evening. So it doesn't mean that it's a rigid, you know, every day I, I, you know, punch out at such and such a time. Right. Um, but it made me more aware, just noticing. I mean, we're always talking about noticing. And um, so in doing this, you can be paying attention to, you know, what you're doing with that time. And, and that choice is yours. It's just noticing when we're abdicating to either vegging out because we're too tired and we, we didn't. Um, so-called manage our time and you know what we did um intentionally and, and and see where our emotional barometer is at the time all right so i'm going to take the word management because it was kind of a um what we talk about in the law a red herring so we don't really manage our time we we manage our focus the time is still only 24 hours a day 168 hours a week it's not going to change and we, we can't get it back once we've spent it. And it's, you know, going to be that day in and day out, week in and week out and so on. 
And the idea is if we can identify what our values are, our, maybe our top four or five values. So, you know, taking care of your family and being there for your family is one. And then what other values do you have? Um, really taking care of myself, um, which I don't do as well as I would like to. So, you know, that's important to me. Um, and just being able to ap appreciate time. Um, Say more. Well, you know, it's like when I realize that, hey, I've just spent the last hour doing a word puzzle when I look outside and it's sunny or I see it's, you know, there's snow on the ground and maybe I could go outside and, you know, throw snowballs at my, in my patio or just something to release some energy. Mm -hmm. um, I sometimes feel like you're not noticing what, what else you can do with your time. And I, and I'd like to start focusing on that a little bit more because um as my husband and I talked about this weekend, um, when we're gone, people don't remember how hard we worked, but they'll remember the fun things that we did. And, you know, that's how I want to be remembered. Yeah, that, re that reminds me of an old, I think it was a Kodak or something like that commercial. This goes back years and years and years. And the premise was we re our memories are tied to the pictures that we have. You know, they, they, they're like little right. reminders of this particular experience or moment, which tend to be pleasant moments, you know, fun moments, because that's why we're taking the pictures. Um, but what if you were to consciously make up some images of how that personal time would show up in a photograph if you had one? Right. If you did a selfie with it, what might show up? Um, I would, I'd be more active than I am. I I would, you know, not feel as bogged down to, uh, oh, I have to do one more thing for the business. Oh, um, I have to go work my other job for somebody else. You know, there are times even when I'm working, when um, there are those Kodak moments and, you know, I think I want to start observing them better, um, and being able to appreciate them. Mm -hmm. And I could even envision doing a, um, a, um, picture or like a little, um, cartoon of, um, some things that you want to do in order to, um, that would represent a Kodak picture. Mm -hmm. All right. So it could be like little stick figures, you know, on a couch or something, or, you know, sitting at a table. I don't know. I'm not very artistic, but um, you know, the idea is to kind of embed in the mind. Remember we're pattern recognizers. We look for patterns and we'll seek those things, particularly pleasurable activities. Um, Michelle Seeger talks about it, it pre-intention in terms of not just having a goal at some remote time, but also when we're setting a goal or some intention to identify in the moment the thing that it was pleasurable to us. So that it, we're not just waiting for the, what we call the lag measure, the thing that comes later, if we do, you know, whatever, you know, some exercise, for instance, on a regular basis, but in the moment of doing this thing, so it could be doing the word puzzle, it could be doing, you know, um, just standing outside, you know, admiring the sunset or something, but the, the emotional, the pleasurable emotions we have in the moment of doing that, so that it's that thing that kind of hooks us, because the, mm -hmm. the brain is going to look for those moments where we have feel good chemicals being released in our body, you know, associated with our thoughts and experience. And it'll want more of it. And um, so that will kind of, um, that's the celebration in the BJ Fogg um, habit um, recipe approach, the tiny habits approach. Um, so in terms of 
identifying the values of the kinds of things that are underlying the desire to plan the intentional time or the idea of your 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 formula that if I have free time that I successfully had carved out for myself, how might I spend these things and which value it satisfies, we're going to be more likely to do that rather than when if we're just looking at the calendar kind of antiseptically and mm-hmm. saying, oh, I need, you know, this amount of time for work and I'll, I'll fill up, I'll fit in my personal time um, around that. So what right now occurs to you in terms of how you might approach these things? And the reason I'm bringing this up now is because, you know, we're at that before and after New Year's. And this right. isn't a New Year's resolution. It's just a New Year's um, way of changing the pattern. Well, it's interesting. I've been um, watching this uh, one family uh, that does a TikTok video. Um it's a son and father um, and it's about their uh, mother and wife um, who happens to have Alzheimer's and it, it, they do these short quips, but I, I am so mesmerized by it that I watch every day. In fact, I'm going to be interviewing this son today because they're making her moments beautiful, not just for her, but for them and for all of us who are watching, um, she has hundreds and thousands of viewers and I just see the appreciation in life in all three of them. Um, and I don't know how much she really understands or not, but they are doing their best to incorporate her. And I think what happens for me is that, I get so hung up on just trying to do the right thing for me, for my family, for my clients that um, I forget to enjoy the moments. <laughs> and and you may make time for those things, but not in that order from what I understand. So it's right. family, the clients, and maybe you somewhere a little later, if there's time. Right. And so I just... I'm not sure what kind of reminders I need, but I need reminders, whether it's um, a musical tune that plays during the day or uh, a picture that's going to pop up on my computer or some post-its around the office just to sort of like, you know, when I look in a different direction, um, I realize, wait a second, you know, you you have a choice. You can live this out or you can appreciate what's going on around you. Yeah, and maybe maybe it's a picture of a broken water here because the time's there if you make it. And right. you know, we make it if it's a priority and you know, a broken water heater becomes a priority. And so we we can create those priorities just so long as we anchor to our values and then organize our time use around that and and including some flex times because something will always come up but then having a game plan on the kinds of things that would be personally fulfilling for us and not just live our so-called off time um, by abdication or vegging well and i think you're right if we put it on the calendar and say this is my time to play or whatever um it becomes rejuvenate. more of an obligation. Yeah, right. rejuvenate because you know you're the golden goose. Look how many yeah. you know plates would come crashing down if you broke down. Yeah, and you know I know that you have had some challenges. So um, Mary Oliver has a quote that I just love, and I'm gonna um, probably destroy it, but it's a, it's a question that basically says, you know, and what are you going to do with this precious life you've been given? Something to that effect. And it just really, you know, um, captures the idea that it's up to us to make the use of it, not just um, live it. You know, the the living is defined by us, what what that looks like. Exactly. So the question going into 2023, can you believe it, 2023? I can't. What are you going to do with this precious life you've been given? Well, 
I think many of us have some thinking to do, but more than thinking, um, you know, let's make 2023 um, the best it can be for us. And um, I just have to remember myself that um, if I slip along the way, uh, I can get back on track. And that's really the most important thing. Exactly. It's always getting back on the bike. Well, thank you again, Candice, and we'll see you next year. How do you like that? Have fun and uh, enjoy your in time intentionally. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye right. now. Bye-bye.